for you. No, you go ahead. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. It's Friday, August 30th, and this morning we will be celebrating and anticipating the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. So let us remember that now we are in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our hope is the kingdom, excuse me, our hope for the kingdom is foolishness in the eyes of the world, but it leads us to the truth. And so let us ask God to forgive our transgressions and so make us worthy to be called to the table. Lord Jesus, you embrace the cross. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you walk through the valley of death. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you laid us to the reign of God. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. And may I invite Helen to come and read for us the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You deep me, O Lord, and I am let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and a reproach of the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak his name no more, but then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed on the third day to be raised. Then Jesus then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. And he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to the disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be to gain the whole world and forfeit your life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Now let's see here. One might assume that being called by God for a special mission would be a welcome honor. Speaking for God, however, has never proven to be very popular or an enjoyable enterprise. Prophets often speak of the burden they feel and the abuse they receive, as Jeremiah does in that first reading. 
The reading provides a window into prophetic engagement. Vulnerability is a great part of the experience. The prophet accomplishes what needs to be done through the power of the divine spirit to which the prophet has to be completely open. The spirit overtakes a prophet's life. This character, Jeremiah, thought he was going to become a great defender for the people of God. He did not realize that he was going to have to give himself completely to the divine and become vulnerable to the transformation. The spirit would give him the knowledge and strength he would need to confront the injustices of his time. Jeremiah's message and work put him on the margins of his own people. As much as he wants to ignore his call and its tasks, he cannot. Justice inflames his heart and ruminates in the marrow of his bones, giving him no inner peace. Now on the margins, he must carry on in the face of adversity and in the midst of hostility. You and I are called to be prophets today. Being Christian in this 21st century is no easier now than it was in the time of Jeremiah. We must be vulnerable and open to receive the spirit who invites us to live the gospel values in our daily lives. Many of you will not be anxious to embrace these values, and many you know will ridicule you for them. You may be scorned for answering Jesus' call to love one another as I have loved you. This is not the way many people live today, but remember to welcome all to the table. The Gospel of Matthew invites us to become uncomfortable, to embody the Christ who, like Jeremiah, is on the margins. The Jesus of the Gospel challenges the political, social, cultural, and religious structures and attitudes of his day. Horrifically, this work for justice ends in Christ's death by crucifixion. And today, injustice crucifies people on the margins still. The temptation for those who are privileged in any way is to just stay comfortable. But the call to the privileged is to act prophetically, to be displaced to the margins. This is the call to live with Christ-like integrity, to stand up for the values of the reign of God, no matter the cost. Disciples of Jesus, modern day prophets, must not remain silent. Injustices demand a gospel response. Gospel love is indeed hard and dreadful. It leaves us vulnerable. It can cost everything. But is there anything worth living without it? Quite a challenge. And Helen, may I ask you to come and, and offer our petitions for us? We will now have the prayer of the faithful. Let us pray for all us prophets who are called to promote, promote the will of God, knowing we are in conflict with the ways of the world. May we have the strength and stamina to promote gospel values. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all church and civil leaders, may they have the grace to govern wisely and justly, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers, students, and parents of those beginning the new school year in this time of pandemic, that they be safe and well as they continue their education. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who need healing, may they be blessed with God's presence and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, and for those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those petitions that remain in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Great and inclusive God, you tell us we are God for all people. Help us to believe that this includes not only us, but all those for whom we have little regard. Empower us to stand up for all people, no matter what the cost they be. We pray in the name of Jesus, whose embrace was wide and deep. Amen. And so, having listened to our gospel message, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And let us pray. O God of the prophets, send your spirit to live within each of us so that we may preach the gospel through our everyday lives. Let us proclaim your command to love one another as I have loved you. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And let me just conclude with our Dominican blessing and say, may God create a bless you, may God redeem and heal you, and may God the Holy Spirit fill you with light. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, witnessing as a prophet of the 21st century, sharing the good news with all those with whom you come in contact. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let me remind you that as we conclude our Liturgy of the Word, Sisters Denise and Sister Peggy will be going to the apartments in Dominican Village. If you would like to receive communion, please don't lock your door and we'll be happy to bring body of Christ to you. Have a peace-filled day, a peace-filled weekend, and may you live the gospel today. Thanks be